Good morning, all. Uh, today, I welcome Mr. Prabhir Jha, CEO and founder of Prabhir Jha Advisory. Welcome, sir. It's been a pleasure to have you on board with Hi, us. Sudan. And discuss upon a very important topic, you know, for the year to come, in the year to come, actually. So uh, just a small backdrop, you know, the year has been, you know, started on a good note, I believe, with progressing growth in economic statistics and employment levels. Now, after witnessing a steep decline in the aftermath of pandemic, the economy was rebounding and recovering. The vaccination drive was underway and everything seemingly overarching looked promising. And I believe you might, uh, you know, agree with the same. But then, however, the second wave caught, caught us off guard and was a huge hiccup that slightly derailed our progress. Nonetheless, you know, uh, the second quarter looked much better for India as cases declined. Businesses were back on track. Markets were performing better than before. And pre-pandemic conditions were steadily getting in place. Manufacturing in offices were functioning at full capacities. Consumer sentiments and the buying patterns, it all changed drastically and improved to a lot of extent. Now, I really want you to elucidate upon what are the kind of trends that in the HR fraternity now we can look out for in the year 2022, which will give a heads up and a roadmap for organizations in a way as to how should they function, in which areas should they you know, put in more emphasis, uh, what should employees look out for in the years to come in the name of appraisal bonuses, you know, how will the scenario be? I leave the stage open to you to tell your audience what what is the year ahead for us now? Okay, this almost Sugan makes me feel I'm an, an, on an astrology show, right? <laughs> but, but thank you very much for inviting me and always a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, it's actually been a very, very uh, uh, interesting 2021. We've seen lows and yet we've seen highs of optimism. And yet when we talk about a year, uh, you know, it is obvious that we talk in terms of generalities because sectors are different, scale and size of enterprises are different. And they've, it's been a mixed bag, right? So some uh, sectors and Corporations get talked about more and they color a lot of the media, uh, you know, reportage. That, let's mm -hmm. also be honest, right? Uh, not everything is only IT, right? But, uh, but having said that, uh, yes, 2021 was an interesting year. We had a lot of seesaw happening. 22, uh, 21, 22, or the financial year 22, 23, I think will be, in my view, a year of cautious optimism. Okay. You know, let's understand the context of business and also the specter of, of Omicron. I hope it's a false alarm, but we don't know, right? And, and these are, uh, you know, some indications of the times that we live in. So uh, I believe that uh, the markets will improve. They will mm -hmm. improve across sectors. I hope infrastructure spending will increase, you know, because that actually generates a lot of employment, therefore discretionary spend, therefore you know, uh, the purchasing power, you know, uh, with people at large, including rural India increases. Mm -hmm. And therefore the entire, you know, cyclicality of how commerce works will happen. So I think uh, I would prefer to believe that uh, 2022, the, uh, uh, the calendar of, uh, of 2022 will be a better year, but it will be a year where HR should look at business or possible business with two simultaneous lens, one okay. of opportunity. How can we maximize opportunity? How can we actually gain the best out of what the world has to offer? Because a lot of business opportunities will emerge. Uh, historical paradigms will get repudiated. Newer uh, business models will get created. It's a very exciting time. Mm -hmm. And the other lens is one of risk. How do you ensure that you're always risk protected to the extent you can, which means also looking at people risks, enterprise risks, right? Because mm -hmm. a huge part of risk is going to be around people. I'm not only saying employees, but the larger catchment of stakeholders, vendors, suppliers, maybe even consumers, because that itself is a very fickle uh, mm -hmm. you know, stakeholder group, but it's, it's really people. So I, I think, uh, you know, as I uh, share with you, maybe five uh, trends that I uh, see, I wanted to leave this strategic perspective it will be a year 
by industry, by enterprise, by company, and it will vary, mm-hmm. you know, uh, an opportunity and a risk uh, a remediation uh, 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 angle. So okay. the five okay. one, uh, five, not necessarily in any particular order, which comes to mind. One, I believe, will be around leadership. Mm-hmm. Leadership is an evergreen subject in HR. Talked a lot, seminars, conferences, symposia, endless ones. But I very strongly believe we still talk more of leaders and we do little about leadership. So we can talk a little about this space. Leadership will be very important. Why I believe it's, okay. it's going to be a very important trend. Uh, you know, uh, in some detail, but leadership, I think, will be an important issue. Uh, the second will be about talent. It will continue to be evergreen. Mm-hmm. I believe you cannot reimagine a 2022 without reimagining talent. In fact, in many ways, the kind of your thinking on talent will possibly shape your business possibilities, right? It's a huge issue. And leadership mm-hmm. and talent, I believe, are very, very organically connected the way leadership thinks of talent will be the kind of talent you will keep which may be great or not so great so we can talk about this entire issue of redefining uh, talent talent okay the, the third which i believe uh, will be a very important trend for us to look at is this entire concept of what i call uh, repositioned or reimagined employee experience okay okay you know at the end of the day uh, people have tasted blood flexibility as an example, maybe that's a separate trend by itself. I'll talk about that. But employee experience, at the end of the day, it is not just about what you will tell the world you are. It is how your people will experience you, which will shape either or for, or intensify what is now being called the great resignation, right? If business right. were to happen right, will great resignation intensify? Will it be the same? A lot of it will have to do with how well do you reimagine and pivot employee experience. Again, yeah, em- employee experience, is it directly proportional to how, how well you want to retain your employee base? Will it will it focus more on that aspect or generality? The, uh, as you said, you know, it's important for organizations also to feel as to how are the employees imbibing the experiences that the organization is providing? Uh, both. In fact, employee experience to me is not just about attraction, retention. That's the very tactical uh, requirement. But employee experience actually will shape business impact. You know, our pe- you know, the worst situation is you've got people in, but they are passive. They are indifferent. You will never become a world class or a business leveraging uh, company, right? Mm-hmm. So it has hardcore business implications. I talk about that in in, in, in some detail. The fourth that I believe will be flexibility. And I'm calling out flexibility for the simple reason that people have tasted blood. And Mm -hmm. flexibility is just not about work from home and work from office and the combination of hybrid working and all that, which has been uh, now beaten to death. I think flexibility is a mindset. And uh, employees for sure as a segment will need flexibility. So what it means, et cetera, we can... Uh, get into some detail but flexibility is important but again it will connect very clearly with leadership it will connect very clearly with the kind of talent you seek to uh, do it will connect very clearly with employee experience it's all kind of interwoven and Mm -hmm. the fifth that i think will be uh, somewhere uh, supporting enabling will be this entire hr tech uh, thinking it is not just for hr the function Mm -hmm. but it is for managers it is for employees but I believe that HR tech will be a very big opportunity for uh, uh, companies to disrupt themselves, to disrupt their thinking, doing, believing, right? And therefore, develop better leadership, better talent, better mm-hmm. employee experience, more flexibility, all in the context of leveraging business possibilities, opportunities. How well do you learn or not learn? So someone might ask, so Prabir, where is learning in this entire thing, right? Many people, of course. Are, they will pick up. So it will all come as I explain in something or the other, you know, employee experience, for example, is a lot to do with uh, learning. Talent is a lot to do with agility. Leadership is a lot about unlearning and learning. So we can get into details, but these are the five under which I will uh, possibly put a lot of downstream uh, uh, sub trends or sub focuses. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're a startup aspiring to be a unicorn or you're a giant organization trying to reinvent yourself to be mm-hmm. still uh, you know, impactful. But all of them 
will need to look at these five to mitigate risk and to uh, you know uh, uh, doubly enhance the business possibilities so to begin with when you said that you know we talk about leaders and not leadership i mean i've always heard that you know leadership and leaders go hand in hand how how can you say that you know we talk about more of one of the aspect when it is said that it goes hand yeah. in hand yeah it's a great question and i've written a lot about this see the challenge is i don't think uh, people in general and hr as a function adequately is able to see the difference between leadership and leader there is there are in many many companies and it's a reality of of every place we are over obsessed with personalities and the persona of the big leader or a set of big leaders definitely impacts leadership down the line now in some cases it is great in some cases it is not so great the best of leaders have their angularities you know in many things they are great in some things they are lousy but the challenge is when you overly focus on leaders you focus on personalities and therefore there are many many individuals around whom we create a halo thou shalt not do anything wrong and everyone mimics that personality and this is where you lose the plot of leadership leadership however is a journey more of pluralism leadership is not about saying these are my three things this is what takes what it takes to be a leader or this is exactly how my chairman is or this is exactly how my ceo is so everyone has to kind of so what it does is it it produces sterility in an organization right and sterility in a world which is buka in a world which is ever changing where the customer is fickle where talent is is not tethered to you you know ad infinitum it's a big risk and therefore to a lot of my client companies i try and provoke them to think that why should everyone be a leader like you because you know then it's a very angular uh, way it's not a risk adjusted uh, leadership so individuals are important don't get me wrong leaders are important they are very important but more important is leadership and leadership by default has to be more consummate i may not have every strength as a leader of every dimension of leadership that makes my business or my company impactful and relevant but if i promote you think there needs to be a stencil designed for all the leaders to actually fit into it no Because that's the point every leader would have his own style of leading that's that's exactly the point i'm making uh, uh, so that that at the end of the day we are human beings we like to hire promote reward people who think exactly like us behave everything the way we do right. right and i disagree with that model i disagree with the model because a any particular leadership persona any i'm not excluding any big guy has a situational context a time context right and the biggest worry that i have is if everyone is a clone of that particular leader who is thinking at the fringes and the world of today needs more wide angled thinking than narrow tunnel vision and therefore leadership must be a more inclusive exercise a more plural exercise together we have every strength with us but if a leader expects to mere jaise nahi ho or you are not like me therefore he is a useless guy oh he disagrees with me so throw him out of the company this is where you lose the plot because then you will breed a culture of psychophancy of blind obedience and compliance which in today's world of volatility uncertainty ambiguity and all of that and this actually gives rise to yes ministers within that, the organization that is well. the point that i make so it sounds very simple but i i very strongly believe starting with leaders chairman and ceos look at their boards the boards look the same and then you'll say the board boards are not effective they cannot be effective because you've only got yes men in there's not much variety in the exposure of these people then your management team that's the same thing so you know the entire thing of leadership is they are leaders willing to think of leadership beyond themselves and i believe fy22 provides us the opportunity whether leaders will change or not i don't know i am still not very sure but if i were to kind of uh, push and you know me i have been known for being more high candor and more straight of talking course. this is where i think hr has to show great courage show the mirror 
and move beyond persona based leaders to actually a context and business led so, leadership so don't you think that you know to an extent the leadership style has already been changed when we now talk about how our hrs making good ceos or good mds because we've never come into that frame wherein an hr person has been promoted to a level of being a ceo or an md i do personally see a slight change in the way leadership styles have now begun because hrs have a different way of leading they've already been leading people for quite a few years and you know it's it's somewhat easier for them to lead yeah. the company also in some aspect yeah so i've written about this in one of my recent posts and i agree with you that i believe uh, these will not be isolated instances mm-hmm. uh and it is not that we've not had hr people become ceos in the past it's also not true mm-hmm. but you know i'll be very honest there is a mindset problem within hr and there's a mindset problem beyond hr starting with promoters and boards you know at the end of the day people prefer to play safe and that is why i keep reminding about the risk preference of companies if you think it's all about a sales guy can be a business leader or a cfo can be a business leader or an operations guy it is the mindset of the deciding group whether it's the promoter or the board right of course and i believe for exactly the reasons you cited no other function gives you the exposure of living with ambiguity as hr no other uh, uh, function lives with contradictions between so many people i have always said from the doorman to the chairman everyone believes they know hr better than hr right so to to work with that is very difficult hr is the only function which has to deliver an hr experience which is not squarely and only delivered through hr most of that experience is delivered through line managers so how do you actually deliver impact through others so in many ways and i'm not talking just of corporate leadership you know i personally would not be surprised that more and more hr people get into political leadership governmental leadership many psu mps in the last 6 months i have seen have come from hr and so public sector undertakings and the selection process for that actually has become absolutely function agnostic private sector is still very closed if you look at the announcements you know that uh, uh, have been made to as the ceos and mds of public sector one of the biggest oil companies in in, in india is currently led, led by an hr person many you know or or, uh, or uh, you know even uh, uh, some of the recent announcements so it's it's the corporate sector which actually has to think a little uh, different but uh, to me again the issue is it's not about what how many more papers of a particular discipline you did or how many years you did in a certain thing because all of that gets aged as a context what it needs is imagination what it needs is envisioning it needs inspiration it needs courage and it's possible that the odd hr leaders who become ceos will not do as as well as it happens with sales and marketing who become uh, ceos as happens with cfos who become you know so i don't think we should be uh, but hr has to stop doing workshops on when will hr become strategic i mean it, it i have never seen a function which is so unsure and i blame a lot of chros and i've written an article on this many times uh, uh, have chros failed the hr agenda right so mm-hmm. i think hr has to really demonstrate greater courage and visioning uh, greater self belief than what i typically see uh, in 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 uh, the fraternity as i take a ringside view of chros and they're doing so that's on leadership so i in okay. interest of time we should you know so it's very important yeah. great questions you ask look beyond leaders reshape leadership make it more plural make it more mm-hmm. inclusive and i think the time is right because if people are able to step back coach your ceos coach your management team try and interact with the board but get them to think differently that's my uh, broad uh, uh, approach okay. or thinking on leadership the second i had talked about was talent mm-hmm. you know i believe that fy 22 will will further intensify the spotlight on talent it's not a new agenda it will not be a new agenda and we don't have to do five new things every year right we have to do the right things and some of these things are not maggie two minute noodles of right? course it takes time like it leadership takes time. takes time it's longitudinal the hr agenda takes a little time it doesn't take infinite time but it takes some time so talent is about again reimagining talent 
And I believe FY22 will present those opportunities. As businesses, when you talk about reimagining talent, sir, are you saying that there will be a spotlight on newer ways of skilling? Or, uh, you know, new ways of hiring talent versus new skills. So it will be a combination of all. But let's start okay. from the very basics. You know, one is if you're reimagining your business, either you want to re-pivot your business, your business mm-hmm. model, you mm-hmm. want to disrupt or you want to prevent disruption. How will you do it? A business model will finally need possibly a more nuanced talent, a different mm-hmm. skill set, a different combination, Right a uh, rejuggled uh, uh, skill set. Mm-hmm. So your talent needs will be very different. So in the minimum, you will have to staff your new business model or new or your new dreams or your new ventures with a very different mix of skill sets. That's the minimum. Okay. I am going a step forward. I am visualizing that smart CEOs, smart HR leaders, smart entrepreneurs, they will make talent the basis of building their business. So if I have these five very skilled people, can I build a new business around them? Right? Which is not the way companies think. The companies typically think, oh, I want to do this and therefore I need this skill set, which I've said is Mm -hmm. important, relevant, and will continue to be relevant. But I'm actually thinking more disruptive. I'm saying, what if I get five people together and around them I create a business? And I believe, especially in the startup space, this is going to be something that we will see a lot of because it's it's about getting the right talent, therefore imagining a problem and imagining a solution, which none of us individually knows and building a business around that. So I think redefining the right talent, uh, not only to meet your new business uh, responses, but to shape your business opportunities is an opportunity, is is a possibility that I see uh, in this. And talent, again, I believe, will be a different uh, combination of skill sets. I personally believe there will be a lot more of cross-disciplinary and cross-industry or uh, cross-sector possibilities. One of the big things, uh, Sugan, that I think has has not helped many companies is thinking very linear. Everyone wants a plug-and-play guy. And that is why companies are not innovative. That is why companies Mm -hmm. don't disrupt enough. If you are in a certain industry, you will look at five other competing companies in that space and get a plug and play guy. This is how 99% of hiring decisions get made. CEOs and CHROs do this all the time. I mean, I also do some executive search work and I am appalled at at the way companies think. They want a ready-made guy, possibly from (laughs) competition. And then you expect and then you expect the guy to think different, you will never think different. So, you know, in my personal career uh, as an exec, I always or often hired people across sectors. And I would like to believe at senior levels, 99% of those calls turned out to be right. In my own HR team, I've hired doctors, salespeople, R&D scientists, not just okay. HR people, and, and from other sectors. Because what I believe is I need their fresh perspective who can challenge me. I don't need more gyan of the same thing. So I believe in FY22, there's an opportunity of redefining talent, uh, remolding talent, and both skills, attitudes, and experiences. Sir, uh, now that you're saying that, you know, you've hired people from varieties of uh, segments across industry, how easy has it been to imbibe the company ethos within those people because they're coming from various walks, different sectors, hence the ethos of their organization and the kind of work they've been doing is different from the work that you were expecting them to do. Yes, plug and play guys are readily not available in times today, but then how do you, how do you help them imbibe the ethos of the company? Yeah. So uh, I'll answer this in two contradictions. The obvious one, you know, your assimilation exercise, your onboarding exercise, your buddy ships, your, you know, uh, having a little bit more of rope because when you're getting a guy from another function or business, allow the guy a little bit more of uh, uh, slack to uh, acquire the ethos of that company. So very typical. There's no rocket science there. Actually, my strategic mind thinks differently and, and thought differently over all these years. I believe I'm hiring them because I don't have every answer. I don't 
always think different because I myself have got conditioned by my industry, by my function in all these years. So I need people who will expose me to my blind spots individually and as a company. So why should I force them to actually become part of my ethos? I will use them to actually help me actually make my culture richer, my ethos richer, right? Okay. And remember, I talked about sterility in culture. Mm -hmm. This is exactly why companies don't innovate, why they don't remain agile, why they are not nimble, because they do exactly what they've done for the last 20, 30 years. A lot of advisory work that I do today, I get called by companies just wanting them to, for me to uh, help them, you know, de-bureaucratize them make their culture more agile. And the question is, for 20 years, you created this because you hired people exactly who were like you. So they reinforce the same stereotypes that you lived with. And now the world has changed. So when I look at talent and the question therefore uh, that you asked is, I will not force them. I will expose them, but I will use them as possible catalysts for making my culture richer, mm -hmm. more varied, more plural, rather than getting the guy and beating them to death to, be, to become like one of us. But this is back to the issue of why leadership becomes important. If the leadership still feels that I want to make the guy the same fellow I was for 30 years, then you are losing the plot in your mind itself. I don't think that's a smart way of looking at, uh, and at least I, for one, have gained by trying to inject people with very different backgrounds experiment mm -hmm. with talent because you don't know the possibilities till you experience the possibility right and that is how right. talent thinking will in my view will change will it change everywhere no because no, most people not. will I mean, be risk averse most people will time, do yeah. what they have done because uh, you know the comfort of the year and now that chros have or ceos have or, or promoters have uh, always defies logic Later, they say, oh, but why did we not think of it? Because you never allowed yourself to think, right? And, and the challenge is that uh, our talent and leadership, therefore, uh, needs a little jolt, needs a little uh, counterintuitive uh, instinct, which unfortunately, in the quest of compliance and control, will we kill in our organization. 2022, hopefully, will be another turning point. Which way companies will turn is up to them. But at least I believe it will present opportunities where you can take the road less traveled. So that I mean, was on uh, talent. <laughs> that was about talent. And actually it was enlightening for me also to know that what kind of trends actually can shape up and what kind of hirings will actually take up, what kind of people, you know, people actually now also need to upskill themselves Correct. into certain arenas. Now that Correct. you've said that hiring wouldn't be as usual as it has been uh, in the previous years. Correct. So it's a shout out for all the people who are actually looking out for nicer opportunities. Kindly upskill yourself mm -hmm. to an extent what Mr. Ja said that, you know, shape yourself into a way that, you know, you're not a plug in plug out person Absolutely. for any organization. We'll move out to, uh, the third oh, trend, sir. Third one. So before I move out, you know, I just want to reinforce what you just said. So it applies to HR leadership, it applies to corporate leadership, and it applies to in, it applies to individuals. Individuals are as closed. They believe because I've done 15 years of this, this is all that I can do. Why? The safety net. I get so many people who write to me, uh, Sagan, for career advice, and I'm okay. no one wants to actually go out of their comfort zone. You know, I started off as a civil servant. 10 years later, I quit the government. 20 years, I ran some of the largest HR jobs in India, right? I became an entrepreneurial, HR entrepreneurial advisor in the last two and a half years. Everything is different. But if you don't challenge yourself, you know, so playing safe is not an option. And 2022 will, in my view, whether for individuals or for corporations, be actually a very, very crucial time. Either you mm -hmm. use this year for reimagination, reinvention, mm -hmm. or you potentially could fall by the wayside because in India, we still have a lot of talent supply, right? So there are many people who can do it exactly the way you're doing. So thank you for, uh, for enhancing that as well, that individuals also need to change their mindset. Of course, so, they will so have you, to. You know, if you know, uh, in, in the name of hiring, if an employer is changing to a lot of extent, of course, an employee will also have to shape to up change. a few things Absolutely. to fall into a line Absolutely. of being hired. 
Absolutely. Perfectly. Well said. And that brings us a logical segue about talking about the third thing that I believe will be very important and will possibly shape some uh, trends in HR. Again, I'm mm -hmm. saying whether it will become a trend or not, I don't know, but I'm talking more about possibilities that I see, you know, okay. is employee experience. I believe money will cease to be the thing that will guarantee either attraction or retention. Mm -hmm. Always there will be a guy who will pay a dollar more. Always. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a small startup or you're a big player or you're in between. Right? There will always be someone who is willing to pay you a dollar more. So employee experience will become important. Now, let me uh, put this in context. Employee experience is going to be very critical in HR trend because that is what will draw the kind of talent that you seek. So let's say you want to be a very command control compliance company. Right. You may not need to hire very brilliant people. You just want people who will not apply their mind and, and follow the SOP period. That's all that you expect. Mm -hmm. That employee experience will qualitatively need to be very different than if you want to be a very innovative company, where you want to experiment, where you want risk takers to come, where you want innovative minds to come, where you want talent which doesn't say, yes, sir, I will do exactly what you say. So you're getting a flavor. One size will not fit all. And therefore, employee experience like talent and leadership must not be reduced to a one size fits all approach. It's innovators versus yes ministers, yes. I would say. Yeah, you know, companies today do not want them. Correct. And I, I, I don't want to sit in judgment and say whether uh, command compliance, because maybe some industries are like that, where you don't want to apply any mind, you know. But some okay. companies are not, or some functions are going to be more like that. If you're in audit and compliance, you don't want innovation for the sake of it. I am not, I mean, I don't want to be misunderstood here. But it is important to understand your operating context, but customize your employee experience for the kind of talent that you seek to invite and keep in that particular ecosystem. So let's say if, if people reach out to me and say, Prabhupada, come back to the corporate world and you know, either be a CEO or be a CXO or a CHRO, whatever. I tell people, if you're looking for a quote poet, don't invite me. I'm not going to be a quote poet. I'm very independent minded. Now I can't change that, right? But, that is the way you functioned. Yeah, right. And if someone wants someone like me, the experience I would need to get is openness, willingness for someone to push back, willingness to disagree, you know, freedom to experiment. Now, if that guy needs someone like Prabir, this is the experience he or she will need to create or offer me to keep mm. me, hire me. But if they want someone, you know, someone wants me, a guy who will come in and say, just Mr. CHRO or CEO, do exactly what I've just told you to do. That's it. Don't do anything else. Right? So you mean to say, if we are hiring creators, organizations need to build or make an atmosphere wherein the creative bent can work Correct. and Correct. not force him Correct. to be a Correct. yes minister Correct. or just follow the compliance blindly. Very and true. in the name of hiring an innovator, we're actually not making use of the innovation skills an Perfect. employee has. Perfect. So, you know, what uh, one often does is one does a very easy but misplaced broad swipe. Mm -hmm. Every company talks the same thing. And I read a lot of these, uh, you know, press reportage or on social media. Everyone is doing roughly the same thing. It, I don't think it's imagination necessarily. The question is, are you strategically aligning employee experience to the talent that you seek to create? And that is where the gap is. You actually think you're trying to get a different talent, but your employee experience is not changing or you're trying to change the experience set, but your talent does not value that experience, right? So it's that combination of mathematics that will be very important. But having said that, I, as a trend, I do feel and again, I don't want to say that all millennial, millennials think the same way. I am, I am not a person who likes stereotyping. You know, at the end of the day, it's almost like saying all women think the same way. So diversity <laughs> and inclusion, I mean, it's, these are stupid things. You know, I mean, it is, it's, it is so beaten to death and is so wrongly understood and practiced. People come from their own societal, economic, and environmental background. So everyone born from a certain year to and after and is therefore millennial needs the same is not true, right? Because, but again, you have to understand that people in general today are exposed to more choice. They have more opportunities to chase. Mm -hmm. Overall, 
overall i'm generalizing i'm not saying it applies equally and in india it definitely does not apply because for every job there are hundreds of people right so you're not the only one but the fact is people increasingly like some choice and employee experience is all about more choice giving not about thou shalt in fact many years ago 15 years ago when i changed or brought in uh, you know maternity leave up to 6 months which today is law you know in that mm-hmm. company no mnc or no indian company was thinking about it at that time i'll just give you one, one example it was all about changing the talent mix of the company to make it so women friendly because we saw that stickability was a better thing with women now if you want more women you've got to make sure that it becomes more amenable a workplace for women so the experience for women and therefore the policy regime so policy design must support the kind of employee experience beyond announcements you it can it is make... not just a policy that will no, work you have is... to design it in a way that you know it is easier to implement that policy then that's right so you might have a policy but if your uh, leaders or managers actually in reality behave differently it doesn't matter what your policy is people's experience will be different so it covers issues around culture so we talked about culture right employee experience is the kind of culture that people seek and i personally believe and i've again talked a lot about it and i believe fy22 will give an opportunity to companies can you almost atomize employee experience what prabir needs is the experience i can offer him and what sugan needs is an experience i can offer her that is the is really where we should get to will not happen in 2022 alone but i think pockets of experience so to say every company will have the same employee experience i think is as misplaced because not every company is one monolith there are different functions there are different talent blocks you will need to adapt your employee experiences to make sure that it works with the kind of talent that you have whether it is learning i mean younger people they like new learning opportunities they like more uh, uh, opportunities taking risks with talent if that culture is not there you're a risk averse culture what employee experience will you offer and therefore what kind of talent will stay for you with you but so many times i hear oh we we uh, you know love uh, uh, loyalty and what do you understand by loyalty is tenure the guy served 30 years for with us so he was loyal but the 30 years he actually did nothing he was a munim ji he was a babu right i would rather hire a guy who serves 3 years with us but makes a difference and then goes on so a lot of these issues of learning of culture the quality of leadership the quality of managers the way they deal with different people will actually be what i call the the basis of employee experience but my directional line is i think 2022 should be where you are you're moving from a cookie cutter employee experiences to individualized to the extent is feasible mm-hmm. it could be by business by function by geography by location in the worst you know uh, but some flexibility i think will be needed and we'll talk about flexibility in just a way but employee experience will be important money will not keep it has not kept me uh, back in a company because at the end of the day i felt that i'm not enjoying myself this is not what i i play for i am feeling very curb i don't feel the best in me is coming out what will you do you'll walk right because there'll be someone else or something else you'd like to do so employee experience will uh, will need to be very uh, creatively done and it needs a lot of uh, 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 diligence a lot of thinking through a lot of recoaching uh, your managers and and i believe coaching is a very therefore very important dimension of fy22 you know uh i get a lot of people who reach out to me and say prabir please coach our cxos but imagine you had coached them when they were 15 years uh, junior or younger right could they have been molded differently so i think 2022 should bring a lot of focus on managerial coaching you know at different levels so that they offer to their teams a very different employee experience which gets the best guys to stay together work together and make a difference to the business so that is okay. what i meant by employee experience all right sir fourth i talked about flexibility now why do i talk about flexibility you know at the end of the day even goal setting for a one year i think is going to be misplaced the market is changing so fast customer preferences are changing so fast so you know these five year plans three year plans annual goal setting annual reviews i don't know whether 
I mean, it will continue, but I think more prudent organizations will become more agile, will become more flexible and offer more flexibility. They need to respond far quicker. They need to be more nimble. Similarly, therefore, for employees, you know, whether it is in their life or it is at work, we all now want more flexibility because our requirements change. You know, today, for example, we are doing this conversation over Zoom and over the last two years, we mastered it, right? <laughs> but some years ago, unless you physically got together 100 people and you spoke, it was impossible. We had, uh, I remember uh, some years ago talking to some very senior colleagues of mine, peers, who said, he was uncomfortable mm-hmm. doing video conferencing. Today, reality has changed and therefore the guys have become flexible. So it's not just about remote working. I hear a lot about people not wanting to be in a Mumbai and Delhi and go to office every day. They want to work out of their homes in their villages or tier two, tier three towns, right? But because... don't you think, sir, now that you know, you're giving so much flexibility into remote working or this remote culture, there needs to be certain policies also devised for employers as well as employees. Basic, you know, something like while you're working on a remote pace and you're working at home, there is no clock in, clock out. Yeah. Because it is assumed that, you know, employees or employers are 24 into 7 available because now that they're working at their ease at home you know this is very basic so well said well said and this is something one is hearing from so many people and you know i again take it back to the issue of culture leadership right if leadership thinks just because sugandh is available 24 by 7 because she's at home home i can call her anytime It is a problem of leadership. It's a problem, the culture that that leadership sets. So there are examples of, you know, of very good uh, 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 examples where there's better discipline of running better meetings, of not intruding in a certain time, right? And and I believe that, uh, and uh, you know, you're so well capturing it. It is also important for employees to be flexible. See, there will always be business contingencies and exigencies for which you will need to be flexible. True. But if, if the employer has, ext- has extracted so much in you that you have no energy left, will you give your discretionary effort or be flexible when actually you need to be flexible? So to me, flexibility is a lot to do with individual mindsets. Unless individual mindsets become fle- more flexible, the collective mindset will continue to be as fixed. So growth mindset demands flexibility. Flexibility to make bona fide mistakes, to experiment, to try something in a manner that we don't do. And it is a chicken and egg story. It needs managers and leaders to be of a different order and not be the old world leaders and managers, which is a big job for HR to change this behavior. It's a massive job. It will not only happen in 2022. So a year later, you ask me, I'll still say leadership will be an important agenda, right? Because it takes that effort. But it is equally important for people uh, to... uh, to develop greater flexibility. And you talked about it in the context of their own skills, their own ways of, of working. You know, And at the end of the day, as individuals, we are equally inflexible. We want right. to eat the same kind of salmon which got packed in the same kind of can. Now, that is not how the world works. Are we able to flex? Are we able to adjust? And to that extent, therefore, think of so many things which can happen, which also connect with experience and talent and leadership. Rotate people more. Transfer people. Individuals don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Managers don't want to allow their uh, team members to leave their teams. They'd rather quit and leave the company, but they are not willing to allow the guy to go to another uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunity within the company. Right. People want a plug and play guy. They don't want. So how will flexibility come? So when you look at it, see how interconnected all these issues are. And that is why it is a strategic priority for organizations in FY22 to confront. They just can't play one angle and say, Prabir, I did this, but nothing worked. It won't work because all are so interconnected and therefore it needs a complete makeover. It's a system makeover it's requirement system that makeover. is needed at the end. Yeah, I mean, And flexibility, if- finally, you know, uh, see it also from a business perspective. Will you say, I mean, I know that uh, I still have uh, uh, numbers to call on Monday to Friday, nine to five. Just as an example, which means if I as a customer have a problem at 5.05 on a Friday evening, I can't reach anyone. What will my customer loyalty be towards that brand? Just as an example, 
does it mean people have to work beyond 9 to 5 necessarily no may not but your entire staffing pattern can be reimagined that exactly. the customer still has someone but not everyone needs to work and uh, a lot of it will come you know from change in mindset we run lousy meetings in india particularly we have no discipline of meetings you know most of our meetings have so many people sitting in meetings i've written articles on this you know uh, which is a total waste of time so your those whole day even required those who are not required so at the end of the day when the guy is busy the whole day sitting through useless meetings the guy naturally will have to work you know beyond 6 o'clock to actually do his work so so i think it's a lot to do with bringing flexibility of the mindset and that is again connecting with the point that i said about coaching and a lot of companies who reach out to me somewhere i sense are very hard wired and you can't be hard wired and say i want to be a successful company in fy22 you know you can't be a hard wired leader and say that i want flexible talent you can't be hard wired an individual and say but i want flexibility of opportunity no one is going to come to you and say i'm going to share rose petals this is your career and everything is assured that world is dead so you need to demonstrate flexibility in learning flexibility in the way you work flexibility in the way you lead manage and you said it right therefore your entire ecosystem design both the push and the enablement has to start creating more flexibility as almost you know a non negotiable also sir i would like to make this a point now that you are talking about flexibility of mindsets as well now flexibility is also required in the way you think that what is the kind of talent that you want to retain and what is the kind of talent that you want them to exit from your company maybe they are not a resource Got for it. you but Got they it. might be a resource for somebody and there needs to be a sensitive way of an exit as well i read Absolutely. your article on the recent layoff also yeah. on better.com yeah. sir i just giving out an example now i agree to the point that there might have been certain people who weren't as productive as the company was expecting them to be and they might have been a resource to some other company but Got actually it. laying them off in one go hurting their mindset to a level wherein an employee would think am i that useless or Got was it. i that useless i have served Got the it. company for x number of years or months i have given my heart and soul maybe i was not a good fit for the company but you've not left even an option for me to apply into any other organization because now morale has come to a level wherein i feel that i've been useless correct so do you think in the remote culture the exits also needs to be redefined in a way that an employee doesn't feel hampered or feel staggered for applying into a new organization correct too. absolutely so you know i will admit i have my uh, hand stained with blood it's not that i have not let go of people all the way from uh, management to members to the rank and file you know in hr that's you know your professional hazard the example you cited and my comments on that was not only about the strategic failure why did you have so many such people why did you allow them to be there unproductive for so long, for so long right. right so it is back to this issue of leadership and managerial incapacity you are as guilty of having nurtured that problem right true equally and what you rightly said is could you have done the same exit in a more sensitive way right because and and i have written about that and a lot has been said already in the press about it so i won't get into this particular issue but let's be honest elasticity of talent is a reality of our times yes you will need to hire sometimes you will need to let go of times because mm-hmm. if business doesn't exist you know the entire ship is going to capsize so not only 500 guys 5000 guys will lose their job so i am i have nothing against people leaving the company or being asked to leave the company I mean, it, it is as much part of any business as anything i am not a person who likes free riders i am not a person who believes that 35 years we are not running government of india here let's be very honest right we are we are running in a very competitive world reality the question is about intellectual honesty can you anticipate your business right can you read better can you hire people when you believe i mean i have had an example in my in my own career and the ceo did an equally bad job you know i uh, uh, around the y2k boom and collapse where we we welcome batch after batch of iitians who we had hired okay. 18 months in advance and within 2 months the bubble burst and we were in a massive downsizing thing and we let go all of them and no manager or leader came to speak so it was poor me and hr which had mm-hmm. to front and imagine what a horrendous experience to of go course. through because you are the hatchet person 
So I think we need to anticipate better. We need to keep weeding underperformance well. We need to keep coaching them. Maybe they are paired with the wrong manager. They are in the wrong job. So, you know, that is where I believe HR has to spend a better job. HR must get out of C-class items. They are far too busy in trying to do somebody's job. I have always uh, talked to my teams. When I was a CHRO and I write a lot about that, I speak to a lot of HR teams about that. Your job is not to do things, which is what everyone in the company expects you to do. Your job is to get it done. Right. At the end of the day, you are not the line manager, but you've got to get the line manager to do everything that we want the guy to do. Set the right goals, give feedback, give tough feedback, you know, make a case of exit. Your job is to handhold and coach the guy, hmm. create the right strategic guardrails. But unfortunately, HR also loves to do rangolis. HR loves to do kitty parties. I mean, you know, and then you'll say, when will we be strategic? Never. Because none of this is... Mindset is not changing. Is not changing. And, and you know, these kitty parties, not kitty parties, whatever these Coke and uh, pizza parties, I have nothing against them or rangolis and all that. But employee experience comes from what they do, not from all these silly, silly things. This can be a little 1%, you know, a distraction. But HR gets busy with all these things, right? And um, and I think that for, uh, uh, you know, over a period of time, you make an organization which becomes sterile, a culture will become sterile. And the easiest silver bullet for companies is to fire people, right? And that's what every CEO loves to do because you can't change your supply chain model overnight. You can't change your manufacturing overnight. So the visa thing is let go of people. And this is where intellectually dishonesty of CEOs, boards, the question is, what did the boards do? I'm sure even this example you cited, no CEO could have actually done this decision without having primed the board. The board later can come and say, well, you know, why don't you take some leave and Mm -hmm. time off? But that's face saving. Boards are equally guilty and we are guilty of having very inept boards, you know, uh, and uh, that's a separate discussion someday. I know we'll run out of time. I want to talk about the last last thing, HR technology. I believe HR must not be a slave of technology, but HR can make technology its slave. You know, I am so inspired and impressed, and I do uh, uh, help some startups in that, uh, in the, even in the HR tech space. What exciting possibilities and opportunities behind be, beyond all these big uh, companies which are peddling uh, HR solutions? There are there's such interesting stuff happening in India in the HR uh, entrepreneurial tech space. I think there are so many things which HR is doing personally with so much of uh, man hours involved, drudgery work which can be actually done with smart HR technology and digital options. HR can make its life simpler. Employees can make a lot of their life simpler. Managers can make a lot of their life simpler. We won't get into details of what kind of these technology options are, Mm -hmm. but it's literally what HR people will know from retire or even pre-retire to hire and uh, uh, to fire or, you know, uh, you know, that entire suite of things. The challenge I find is the speed of decision making is the ability of CHROs to convince their uh, CEOs or CFOs in some cases to be able to be quick adopters. I still find this seen as a big cost. They do not see HR tech investment the same way they see, let us say, a a, a CRM, uh, you know, because you can count the uh, pennies immediately in a sales optimization or a customer relationship management uh, thing. HR tech has to get positioned. And that is the job of good CHROs to do. Experiment, adapt, plug and play. Because, I mean, I see these uh, almost every week. Some startup or the other wants to, you know, get me to help them or critique or, or, you know. And I am so impressed with the uh, possibilities that I see around. All the way from engagement to recognition to pre-hiring, hiring. You can, you can, you can actually crash timelines. You can dramatically improve experience. But the issue again, Sugand, is about mindset. You know, today technology has become so intuitive. No one needs to know any code. You can almost speak. It's like our iPhone. We can speak. We don't even have to type our messages. But the mindset is so close. And the other thing is, which is again an issue of culture, all of this shifts accountability and responsibility to where it actually should reside. Why should an employee expect his manager or HR to do things that they are in a position to do? 
why should managers not do anything which an, uh, or do anything which an employee should do or they pass it on to hr and why should hr say mai to kar dungi ya kar dunga you know it's the a pass waste. and the parcel continues pass, correct so information democracy breaking these positional silos the sense of loss of control you know oh if i do this my power will go away oh my god this is my job now accountability these are all myths and which is back to this issue of is this organization communicating enough not one way are you able to dialogue enough so i think hr technology has huge possibilities this i think no one can stop but can we do it much smarter can we do it quicker i think fy22 right. will give us immense opportunities of leveraging technology to make a lot of our life much simpler so we actually have more time to do things and actually switch off beyond a point we don't have to work the crazy hours but it needs a lot of our thinking to change before technology can help thank us. you so much sir it has been an enlightening experience to actually hear what do we what can we see in the years to come in the year 2022 we have lots of questions but we are running out of time i am going to transfer some of the questions over an email or whatsapp to you and probably when we post this video you can actually give in your responses sure. as sure. to what is your viewpoints upon the same we've catched uh, you know we've got good attraction onto this video initially it was low in numbers but then you know as the time went we've got huge numbers to actually look at it has been a pleasure talking to you because Thank we've you. got stats we've got examples we've got proper analysis as to why is your thinking moving into a direction that tak 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 these will be the five trends to look out at thank you so much for your time thank you so much thank you for pleasure, inviting sir. me same here all the best and thank you once again take care thank Bye -bye. you so much sir happy and a very year. happy new year to you happy new year to you and to all your viewers take care thank you so much sir